Chapter 16 The Beauty and the Cruelty The great bald eagle sits atop the tall spruce tree, surveying his kingdom. As the sun rises early from the east, and the day breaks into its full summer glory. The sea is calm like glass, and the boats sit idly at the floating docks, while the old sloop with its tall mast rides quietly at anchor. The chickadees sing out their songs of reveille, the woodpeckers knock on the tree trunks, and the loons share their haunting wail, as monarch butterflies, who have come all the way from Mexico, flutter among the gardens. The tiny buzzing hummingbirds drink their nectar, and each creature fulfills its destiny as it is written for them in the Book of Life. Holdout rises from his bunk and sticks his head out of the cockpit and breathes in the fresh salt air. He lights up the alcohol stove and puts a kettle on, makes some coffee and oatmeal, and he eats his breakfast, thankful for the day and to be alive. Already it is very warm with hot winds that have worked their way up from the Caribbean. Holdout applies sunscreen on his arms and puts on his cap, ready for a long day's work. He closes the hatch, climbs into the dinghy, and starts rowing across the calm waters to the docks, thinking of what the new day will bring. At the dock, he ties up the dinghy and does a quick check of the boats, and says a few good mornings to rising sailors before he heads up to the clubhouse restaurant to sign in and collect his task list for the day. At the restaurant, he is told by a new staff girl that he needs to go over to the office building and see Fontaine, up in her office. So he crosses the wide gravel parking lot and goes up the wooden stairs on the outside of the office building. He opens the door and climbs up more stairs to the loft. Passing women at their desks, he goes to Fontaine's office and knocks on her door. Through the glass window, she motions for him to come in and asks him to close the door behind him. She doesn't invite him to sit down as she says the meeting will not be long. He knows he was in the wrong and has fallen short, and he braces for the coming reckoning. Please sign up to access the rest of this audiobook for free and experience the wild coast of Nova Scotia.